Coalition of La Associations want a parliamentary probe into the violence allegedly unleashed on them when they protested against what they say is an encroachment of their lands by the Ghana Armed Forces. They want the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbin, to immediately constitute a bipartisan committee to investigate the issues and call the military to order. The group converged and protested on some lands in contention located between Chado and Airport Hills around the military cemetery to register their displeasure over the military's encroachment and they, together with the media, were violently removed from the premises. An action the Ghana Armed Forces has justified as necessary to protect some military installations. Let's listen to the public relations officer of the coalition, Jeffrey Tete, who spoke at a news conference. We wish to reiterate that the people of Lash are not relent in our efforts to gain control of lands fought for and gained through the toil and blood of our fathers. If the military, with their arms and ammunition, insist on illegally annexing lands bequeathed to us by our forefathers, they might as well kill every indigent of La to make that dream come true. But until they are able to do that, they can never, and I repeat, they can never take the land from its true Alodia owners. The people of La were long in occupation of these lands before the West African Frontier Force, the predecessor of the Ghana Armed Forces, even, was even established. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, we wish to state also that the people of La have never given lands directly to the Ghana Armed Forces. It is the government of Ghana we have dealt with, and it is the same we shall continue to engage in order to take back our lands. We would want to use this opportunity to commiserate with all persons who got injured through the unreasonable actions of the men in military uniform, especially our friends from the media. We also commiserate with those whose vehicles were damaged or destroyed, and to those who lost their mobile phones and other personal effects believed to have been stolen by perpetrators of the dishonorable act. We are indeed sorry. Finally, we wish to take this opportunity to call on the Speaker of Parliament to institute a bipartisan probe into the event of Thursday, April 15, 2021, in which the Ghana Armed Forces exhibited so much indiscipline and disregard for life and limbs and engaging in conduct contrary to their military code and bring the perpetrators, especially the ones who issued out orders for these acts to book in accordance with the laws of Ghana. Now, the coalition is also demanding that the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abujinapo, sticks to a consensus reached between the La Traditional Council, the military and government days before the 2020 elections to hand the, um, the land back to the people of La. It is interesting to note that just a day after the unfortunate incident, members of the La Traditional Council were invited to meet the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, the Honorable Samuel Abujinapo, to discuss issues surrounding the land in contention. It was our expectation that the Honorable Minister would engineer the implementation of the laudable consensus engineered by his predecessor with the interested parties, which included the Ghana Armed Forces, made on November 27, 2020 after a two-year-long deliberation on the subject. However, briefing we have received from the La Traditional Council indicates a contrary view from the minister. The Coalition of La Associations wishes to inform the minister and government that the good people of La will not countenance any short, anything short of the implementation of the consensus already reached. I would emphasize on that. The Coalition of La Associations wishes to inform the Minister and Government that the people of La will not countenance anything short of the implementation of the consensus already reached. It is our firm view that the consensus reached at the meeting with the previous Minister of Lands at the meeting at which all interested parties were present is binding on the current Minister and, cannot, and he cannot depart from it. Any attempt at altering those decisions or even trying to reopen fresh negotiations on the subject matter would not only be a sign of disrespect to the chiefs and people of La, but also make a mockery of the time-consuming two-year-long consensus building process engaged in by all interested parties. Ladies and gentlemen, let it not be said 
that the government, led by His Excellency Nana Adudanko Ekufuado, received, sorry, deceived the people of La by making false promises in order to make a political gain at the 2020 elections, only to turn around and renege on those promises after achieving victory at the polls. Meanwhile, they have described the conduct of the military as unruly and their press release explaining what happened as completely false. You would recall that exactly a week ago, a group of soldiers from the Ghana Armed Forces were deployed to brutalize and terrorize the people of La, as well as some media personnel who had gone to Plecho on a routine visit to the land with the support of the traditional council. The actions of the Ghana Armed Forces which received so much media attention can best be described as dishonorable and the perpetrators of that act should be bowing their heads in shame. Now joining us via Zoom is Ni Obo Fredman Afo. He is chairman for the La Trustee Development for some updates. Now we understand the trust has been having series of meetings with government and the military on the matter. Can you update us on what these meetings have achieved? Thank you very much, my brother, for bringing me on to the program. Indeed, I'm the chairman of the East Dadikotokon Development Trust, as you said. Um, but there's, there's a point of correction here. The trust in itself has not been holding any meetings with the government, neither have we been holding meetings with the military. What I, as a representative of, of the trust, has been doing is to join the chiefs and other members of the La Fraternity or the La Traditional Council to meet with the minister, as has been said by the coalition. As has been said by the coalition. And they said it's been two years of arduous in and out of negotiations here and there until the 27th of November when the pronouncement was made. Right. Now, tell us about this pronouncement, Ni, and what exactly was agreed from these meetings or at these meetings? Okay. At the, at the meeting, with all stakeholders present, including uh, representatives of the military high command, it was agreed. It was agreed that... There are, there, are, there are areas that we could deal with. One, we have a place or a part of it where we call the Beijing Barracks. There are about 86 acres of land there. The military is occupying 30 acres of that land. It was agreed that 56 acres of that portion of the 86 was coming, was coming back to us. There's a place they call the stable area. There we have six acres of land in that area. In another 26, close by where they have their sewage, they, they, they have their sewage. All these areas don't fall within the military, the, the, within the military acquisition, so to say. That is where the military occupy. That portion is purely for the last two, and it is expected that the six plus 26 was also coming back to us. Now, after that is that long stretch of 375 acres of land, and which is very close to the Out of that, a 75 acre of land was made available as a buffer for the military. 250 is coming to us as what is to be released. And then the 50 acres um, earmarked or left for the military cemetery. Now, as outside that is the Isigbedema Airport Hills land across the street. There, there's about 60 acres of land that should also come to us. Now, after, after, after that point, uh, we, have, we have to move on to the beach area where we have the Laboma Beach Resort. There's a 33 acre land there that does not fall within the military occupation. And then outside their boundaries is an, another 11 acre land that they should not also touch. Right. So all these lands, I understand, must come to you. What has changed since the 27th of November, which has occasioned, you know, first of all, what happened 
when the military uh, is said to have unleashed violence on you, and which has led to today's news conference. What has changed? Okay, on the back of 27th November 2020, was the agreement by all stakeholders to, to meet on the 4th of December and then sign the MOU. That, that, that will cover, I mean, that was going to consummate all what has been done across the two years. We were invited on the day around 10 where to the, the 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 mou was to be signed at 11 a.m but just when the chiefs were ready those of us who joined them have also been alerted and were ready a call came through that the tiny of the mou was to be put on hold to further notice um we were surprised because we don't know where that was coming from and that is what it has been since then. Uh, it, is, it is worthy to note that at our meeting, it was agreed by all parties that nobody was to step onto the land. No, no constructions were to go on until the final determination or the final consummation of what has been agreed upon. Now, uh, has any construction gone on? Has anything of the sort happened since you don't have any documentation currently to protect your ownership of the land, um, which would inform your fear or your concern that the ministry is not keeping to what was agreed on the 27th of November? Um, for us, it was the MOU, the signing of the MOU, which was going to... which was, which was going to sort everything out. Um, but then we, we, we should not lose sight of the fact that we have all agreed. We've came, we came to a consensus that nobody, no parties, was to go on there and start any construction. And you, we all note that it was after the 4th of December into the beginning of 2021 when the military started grading the place and then doing all what is going on there. Okay. Okay. So currently, um, after you saw this, did you reach out to the ministry? Has any work been done to continue the process that was halted on the 4th of December? Um, that is a week ago tomorrow. Last Friday, we met with the minister. Our concerns were raised with him. Uh, we, we were raised with him. And so then at the, at the city, at the ministry, the city minister, um, Honorable Abu Jinapo, gave instructions that a letter must be draft, drafted for him to, to sign, which was to be forwarded to his colleague minister, that is the, the minister of defense, to ask the military to desist from what they are doing, to stop them from uh, the, continue, the continued construction. And so this is what has transpired so far. What would then inform today's protest? Um, it looks to me like the minister is sticking to the agreement and he is making moves from what you are saying to honor what was agreed on the 27th of November. Why are you currently asking for um, the minister to make sure that he does that? Why are you asking for this parliamentary probe? Um, yes, the, the, parliament, the, the, the request for a parliamentary Probe comes on the back of the brutalities, brutalities that were visited on our people and then the media. Your colleagues, your own colleagues were there. Some of them were brutalized to the point where they had cars and uh, bruises and wounds all over their bodies. Um, even though what I said happened at the last meeting, we've been sending people around and then there is evidence, there is information trickling in that there are still skirmishes going on there. There are still people in some areas, uh, you know, inclusive of the 200 and 375 acres who are still working there. And this is quite agitative. I believe this is what is driving the youth to still send a warning out or to send the signals out that we are still not very comfortable with the actions of the military. And right. then the probe is to go into who ordered the truce to 
to, to come on and brutalize innocent civilians when they were defenseless, they were unarmed, and they were not doing anything on toward, but just to pay a visit to land that belongs to them. Uh, but Ni, uh, quickly on that issue about the brutality that was meted out to you, allegedly, and um, why would you go to a military installation if you are negotiating with the military on one table? We know that security installations are to be protected religiously by these men of uniform. Why did you go there in the first place? Thank, thank, thank you very much. The, a point of correction. We didn't go to any military installations. We were not there at Bema camp. We didn't go near any armory or magazine or any military installation. We went on to bare land. We went to Plecho. That place is called Plecho. We went on to bare land that is virgin, that has nothing there apart from trees, shrub, and bush. And but, nobody but, but can tell me, us there was any military me. installations there. Respectfully, me. So if the, if the military came up saying that we were we were there at any military installations, that is palpable falsehood. Respectfully, me, you are you are calling it bare land by your assessment, are you not? Yes, by by what it is, not my assessment. By what it is, because that is what it is. Your your own colleagues, the media people who went there, we bear witness to what I'm saying. But um, I'm simply asking the question because as much as I respect my colleagues of the media who went with you, I don't know if any of us are clothed with the expertise to tell us if there were some things, for instance, buried there or there was any sort of installation which we cannot see. We don't know if it was a training ground for military. We don't know exactly what the land had been used for. So your description of the place as bare land is what I'm pointing to you could be very subjective. Is that not the case, Ni? No, that is rather objective because I know that in Berlin, it has never been any military training grounds. We know that where the military training grounds have been. We know where their shooting ranges have been. The, the, the old one that was moved to the beach. We know all that. We know where the magazine is. We know where their armory is. This has been bare land. If indeed, like you're asking, or we want to know, if indeed, there are any military installations there. There may be any ammunition. How could they even go and be developing? It's not, uh, uh, what do you call it? Civilians that they are deploying and working there. What is happening there is not military operation. It is construction that is going on. It is development that is going on there. I'm simply pointing out to you, Ni, that you would have to be a security expert to tell me that it is or it is not a military installation. But... Um, I respect the views that you, you espouse here. You're quite experienced in the area. I simply want to know, finally, if you are aware, because this is what our sources from within the ministry are telling us, uh, are you aware that there is a meeting set up between um, the traditional council, the trust, and the military scheduled for tomorrow? Are you aware of this? Yes, I'm aware of it. I'm, I'm part of the meeting. Right. Is, that comes on the back of the meeting we had with the uh, minister last week, Friday. So, so if, I'll be there. Right. And so did you hold this meeting, this news conference, knowing that there was a meeting tomorrow? And if that is the case, would that not be bad faith? Um, I wouldn't say that is bad faith. If we are talking about bad faith, it is the military that has shown bad faith. It is them who have who have gone along to breach whatever agreement that, uh, or are caused that we came to since uh, um, November, 20, uh, November 2020. That is 27th November 2020. So we have not acted in bad faith at all. All what we have done today is to draw the attention to all and sundry that there are those who are breaching uh, the, uh, the, the accord, the agreement. There are those who are in green uniform who are brutalizing and terrorizing people because they want to forcibly take their land. So we have not acted in bad faith at all. Neil Boafred Manafel, thank you very much for joining us on The Pulse today.